Now, just to bring you back to speed on this topic, I recently made a short, or last month, from my video going over the Black Pill community titled, Not All Women Live in a Fantasy. Most women who I see with those requirements are the same women who Jordan Peterson talks about, who just look for a fantasy type creature, and what are they again? A surgeon, billionaire, werewolf, pirate, and vampire? Who's got a crap ton of money like a billionaire? Basically no one. Who's the height of a werewolf? Basically no one. Who's extremely dangerous like a pirate? Basically no one. And on and on I could continue on, but I think you get my point of how there are women who live in reality versus women who live in a fantasy or live for a fantasy. Ergo, I want a man who makes six figures, or I want a man who is above six foot three. And it would appear through the dislike ratio that I should explain myself on that statement. But I must say first and foremost, hey yo. I'm toasted. The ideas. And here I talk about things that interest me. I like to think about things critically and have my own opinion, cause then I'm not a sheep to any specific person or thing. I cover topics from the left to topics from the right, while also not forgetting about the topics in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Now, to continue on with me talking about those requirements that I had started out by noting. And those requirements, while noticeable towards the end of the clip, were touching upon the typical black pill speech of how women only want men who are six foot three or making six figures or above, which are both noted by two of the archetypes that Jordan Peterson points out in his speech. The explicit ones exist. So they did a plot analysis of the typical pornographic female fantasy. Well, and it was so, it's so comical because engineers did this and social scientists would never do this because they'd be probably too concerned about the ethics of it or some damn thing. But engineers, you know, they'll just plow ahead with no concern whatsoever for such things. And they actually discover things that way. And so they, they discovered the basic plot of the female pornographic literary product. And they identified, so basically what happened was that a innocent, well-meaning, and attractive young woman encounters a male who's a bit of a monster. And the monster, there's five types of classic male monster. For all you males who want to know, this is what you can become. Vampire, that's a good one. Werewolf, billionaire, pirate, and surgeon. And so... I might be wrong with how I go about this. I will be completely transparent with that. But how I decide to look at those archetypes, that being the vampire, pirate, werewolf, billionaire, and surgeon, is by looking at them in a different way. And how I go about that is by pointing out the obvious. The billionaire obviously returns the common structure of money. The werewolf, which, uh, I'll be honest, I didn't know this at first, but just going off of how I personally understand the world, I decided to look this up. But apparently, a werewolf returns a common structure of height, which is definitely up for debate, but after looking up height of werewolf and it giving me anywhere between 6 foot and 9 foot tall, I decided that height would be what the werewolf took after. But then, continuing on with the pirate in that video, I suspect would return to the structure of being aggressive. Which, I don't exactly have any reason as to why the pirate alone returns to that, but just continue to hear me out with the next archetype being the vampire, which I believe to return the common structure of mysterious because they're by movie and book standards not seen during the daylight or in other terms they're hidden from the public eye which makes more chronical sense than the next archetype of the surgeon which 
I'm a little confused as to what makes a surgeon strike out against all other jobs, in that it's so significant that it comes onto the leaderboard. But what I suspect to be the structure of being a surgeon is that you have fame on that, right? Because whenever you make a hyperbolic chamber of a family in your brain, there is always that one aunt who is preaching about their child doing something like, oh, my child's a surgeon, how about yours? Or, oh, my child's a lawyer, or something upon that line. And while I myself have never experienced that, I have heard about it enough times on Reddit to think that I'm just the exception. So, uh, tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. Anywho, so, as it goes, this is how I personally see the structure as to what women most want in a fantasy-type man. And while I'm pretty sure that all five is the mark of a Prince Charming type, I'm going to take this by a case-by-case -case kind of thing because I think that that, as a man, can help in the struggles with dating. So, here are the types. A billionaire for money purposes, a werewolf for height purposes, a pirate for aggressive or dangerous purposes like a dangerous man or an aggressive man, pick whichever one you want to choose, a vampire for mysteriousness, and a surgeon for fame. Or in a more concise manner, women most fantasize about my men who A. have a lot of money, B. are tall, C. are dangerous, C. Uh, had a stroke, D. are mysterious, and E. have fame attached to their name. Now, what does this mean for men? Well, I'll tell you. It just means that if you want to date a woman, you should focus on these things or focus on becoming these types of things in a collective. Now, height point aside, because that one is completely genetic, this is completely good news. Because it gives you a wonderful outline as to what is needed in order to date. But... As I stated, you should work on these things in a collective. Because when you just work on one of those things, then you get three-dimensional type women. Ergo, the age-old statement of, when you give cheese, you get rats. And are gold diggers four-dimensional? Uh, I mean, technically, yes, but not really, because their MO is quite obvious. They just want money. And that principle works for all of those types. Think, there are women who, who want to be with legit criminals. Example, dangerous men. And or, like Eva Braun. If you know who I'm talking about, then you know. I'm not going to go into that any further. I, I might have pronounced that wrong, though. Just want to make that known. Uh, <clears throat> continuing on. There are also women who want to be with pop stars. Example, famous men. There are also women who want to be with the social low lives. Example, mysterious men. Second to last, there are women who like climbing a tree. Example, tall men. And finally, there are women who just like money. Example, rich men. Now, comes the harsh truth when you only engage in one of those traits, be it money, height, dangerous, mysterious, or fame, then that is where you only attract women who you don't want, or I would think that you shouldn't want, be it from gold diggers, attention seekers, to downright evil women. That is who you attract when you only engage in one of those traits. In moderation, you should work on all of those, excluding height if you can't, obviously. But just because you're not tall doesn't mean you shouldn't work on the others, because I guarantee that if you work on those other traits as a collective, you will find a woman who will be attracted to you, negating your height factor. And I'm not saying that you, you should just go out and steal something to fix that dangerous portion. Because 
that is just no way to live in a civilized world. But what I am saying is that you should not only learn, but also understand what it means to be a force to reckon with. Because then, if a supposed person doesn't, then that is where that dangerous comes from. And in doing so, the learning and understanding, you also gain an air of mysteriousness to yourself because you know that you're a force to reckon with, which gives you an immediate sense of confidence in yourself. But now, uh, here is another harsh truth. That is, if you brag about being a force to reckon with, then you immediately lose all attraction to yourself. Because now you're just a social pariah that people laugh at as, Did you see so-and-so's video? Then gets tossed around and now you're no longer a force to reckon with, but rather a force of laughter to everyone around you. Bro thought he was that guy. What the hell are you doing up there, bud? I'm gonna need you to get down, bud. recording us. sir. You. Calm down, partner. Why you on your knees? Get down, boy. Get down. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> or, just as a general rule, it is never a good idea to brag about some about anything unless you're actually able to reproduce that thing that you bragged about. Though to continue on, uh, another reason for why you shouldn't only work on one of those traits is not only because it then attracts the wrong type of women, but then you, yourself, also become wrong because then you're what would be called a person of lacking personality. And another thing is that you should work on those traits in a positive way. Because if you don't, then you can really fumble the ball and not only become unseen, but also unwanted. Take, for example, nice guys, who are typically just a mixture between dangerous and mysterious, which, when tied together in the wrong way, can become creepy and weird like most nice guys, who are therefore just unwanted. Not only unseen by the women they want, but also unwanted. So, uh, just to put the kibosh on this, you should, if you're a man, work towards fixing each of these traits in a smart way. And I'm pretty sure that you should be able to achieve the goal of dating. But, uh, what do I know? Well, whatever your thoughts, Please leave them down below in a manner that eggs on conversation. And while you're down there, perhaps consider hitting that subscribe button to become a fellow breadbag. And also, hit that like button so that people who may not have seen this video can see this video. And so that they can also join the bread box. Because once again, we need more bread. But... I hope to see you in the next video, and until then, have a good one.